Hello. Oh, hi, hi David. Hi, is that Rob Cherry? Yes, it is, yeah. Hi, Rob, how are you doing? Not too bad. Good. Yeah, thanks for uh, agreeing to, uh, to talk to me for the piece. No, not at all, I'm knocked out. Very nice. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, so I, I guess your uh, performance the uh, other night went pretty well, from judging from the, uh, the reviews I've read. Oh, the uh, uh, audience was really quite amazing. It was uh, quite an extraordinary event to have done, and uh, I guess because I live in uh, Manhattan, well, low Manhattan, actually, not that far away, that um, I kind of really felt duty-bound to do something on it. Yeah, and w was it a more emotional experience just because the, the, the yeah, beneficiaries were... Yeah, I think it was, because, you know, my local ladder were there, and I knew that, you know, and just sort of... I walk past them a lot with my little girl every every week and all that, and so we kind of know the guys down there. Oh, amazing. And they lost quite... they lost 14 something like that so it was you know it was really it was quite an emotionally impacted uh, thing to do yeah yeah no that's wonderful you, you contributed to that I think everybody was great I mean they, you know it, they really knocked themselves out yeah it was it was it was, it was a, a real I don't know it was a very chummy kind of you know gig to do it was a nice gig the same kind of feeling as one of the only other ones that I've done which was the live aid way back in the 80s you know. yeah that, that's what I wondered but I guess I guess just with the beneficiaries being right there in the audience and you being it close to the event it was different doing it for yeah. the kind of people that you kind of live around or you know live in your own community than doing it for people in a, in a different country it's a different kind of vibe yeah it's interesting it's, uh, I'm really pleased I did that excellent and, and I guess um, I, this this whole thing has come about right when you're in the midst of recording the uh, the new disc and <laughs> don't they always <laughs> yeah yeah you can't plan tragedy and <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah um exactly yeah so we kind of scrabbled around really fast to pull it together and i mean i hadn't worked with them before but the paul schaefer band were really pretty stand-up guys and they learned everything virtually overnight you know and everybody sort of pulled hard really really quickly to try and do as good a show as possible in the, in the small time that we had yeah i guess we're used to doing that but how, how how is this how is it affecting your music for this this new album? Has it have you have you written any new tunes since then? Or? Uh, no, uh, everything we'd already pretty much gotten down all, all our tracks um, before the eleventh. I mean, we started recording. I'm I'm recording with Tony Visconti now. Right, right, which is exciting. It's yeah. it's uh, it's it's really exciting. Um, and uh, the nucleus of the band is uh, Matt Chamberlain on drums. Oh, he's wonderful, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's one of the, he's got to be one of the most inventive drummers I've worked with, um, in the way that, you know, he was creating a lot of tapes on the hop, you know, a lot of loop things that we were kind of throwing into what we were doing. Oh, amazing. It's, it's just a great way of working. I, it, and his choice of percussive instruments is just the scream. I mean, it's, there's lots of dustbins and saucepan lids and bits of old metal that he's found and uh, hacksaw blades and, and <laughs> it's just... That's an incredible selection of things that he hits. Wow, plus, uh, plus he's a heavy hitter too, right? Yeah, yeah, he's just so great. He's so solid. Um, so it was terrific. And then we got David Torn on uh, the majority of the guitar, who also I'm a, a huge fan of. Yeah, no, he's, he's wonderful. Um, and uh, Tony Visconti mainly on bass, and uh, and a few other, like, recorders and, and things like that. And a lot of the other stuff I, I, I'm, I'm playing myself, uh, nearly all the keyboards, uh, some guitar, saxophones, uh, stylophone, wow. uh, synth work, uh, programming silly things like a Roland 707 and stuff to, to work as loops for Matt to work against, who also supplied his own loops. There's, there's a lot of, sometimes we're trebling up on loops, you know. Right, right. What inspired you to, to kind of roll up your sleeves again and kind of... Get back um, into it just fell into the, it really wasn't a pre kind of uh, thought out thing um, I had done advanced writing on this album I'd got, I got pretty much 20-25 pieces that I really wanted to start working on uh, it's only when I started playing them in the studio t Tony and I took out like uh, five or six days of putting down our ideas on how these things should shape up and I was, a pl I was playing a lot of the parts myself with Tony playing bass mm -hmm. and it just felt right the way I was playing them in fact we did get uh, one guy in to do some work on, on something I'd rather not bring all that out but you know uh, it's just that my work sounded better in terms of what I needed to have done it didn't have the finesse that, that say maybe uh, interesting well yeah I, I went back and listened to um, 
uh, Diamond Dogs again this this morning actually because <laughs> you you reference that in low and uh, yeah. Um, it has a sound, you know. I mean, it's not. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's wonderful. I mean, it's. it's a, I just have a feel for those particular kinds of things. There's a, it's like, well, Pete Townsend came to the studio the other week, and uh, his overall comment was, uh, and this is because he liked the album. <laughs> he said, for him, it was like Franz Kafka meets Ed Wood. Wow. Which I took as an immense comment. I thought, yes, that's exactly what I think it sounds like. Was, it, was, that, was that because you were wearing a dress that day or something? Or? <laughs> it was the mohair that did it, yeah. Interesting. Um, I, I was just, a, I, I, I really kind of got what he meant. There was a, there's a kind of a handmade quality to it that, that um, I'm really enjoying. And it, and it does kind of hark back to, um, in only in that way does it hark back to uh, what I've done before. Um, yeah, I was curious about very different albums, Diamond Dogs and Low, and not even remotely similar. But that element of handmade is within the two of them, and this one indeed has that same quality of handmade. But again, it's absolutely—I couldn't compare it with any any work that Tony and I have done before. It definitely, is a move, a sideways move. Yeah, no, it's curious because those two two albums—I mean, they're they're very different, but at the same yeah. time, they're not very optimistic albums. Um, um, this one probably has a, a spiritual sense of positivism about it, although, and I'm sure that I'm not the only artist that this has happened to, but there are quite a number of lyrics on the album that just, it just they just dropped us after the 11th. I mean, there were sort of things that sort of were so kind of ap appropriate for that particular thing that, ha that that happened at that time right um but again i don't i think a lot of artists are going to be finding that that's happened to them if you know what i mean yeah well i mean you've always kind of had that prescience did, did that when, when those incidents happened did that did it scare you at all that you've had these in the well, past it me more than anything else is um because obviously the first immediate thing what one is concerned about is one's family sure you know, yeah. the first thing we did it was evacuate uptown a little bit to get away out of the actual Grand Zero area but um, two or three days they, they insisted to go back again so they're, they're pretty brave about the whole thing right so you know uh, yeah there was a very yeah it was uh, I look at the lyrics or I hear the lyrics now in a very different way from the way that I wrote them before yeah I guess because um, in your in your early days you, you always had these kind of post-apocalyptic images and I think yeah. I think I, overall, I'm, I'm more of a. Well, yes, I think they were they were probably pessimistic without much spiritual life to them. I think that probably the difference is is that this one has a way. Well, I would have to qualify that as well. There's a lot of spiritual doubt on this particular album as well. Hmm. Um, but I, it resolves in a positive note, or I don't think so. I don't think I ever resolve anything on my, on my work. I think that, that they're inevitably a series of questions in, 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 in as much as anything else. And they try and capture an atmosphere that, that I find, you know, that I'm living through uh, to a certain extent. And I think in that particular way, this album is, um, both creatively and capturing a moment, I, I'm, I think it's an unqualified success. I find it, I think it's a very successful album. Uh, I'm very pleased with it in that way. Are, are there any, any lyrics that kind of stand out for you as... No. Um. Yeah. <laughs> any, any, any lines you could quote that are especially? Uh, no, I wouldn't want to do that at no. this stage. No, it's it's, it's uh, no. It, it also, I wouldn't want to force the thing too much. That, good God, these were written before the eleventh. You know, I, I don't. I'd like the the album to be viewed much more as a whole than kind of identify a couple of lines, and those lines kind of become key lines. Right. Because uh, I'm not sure that that really is the point of the of the uh, the album. A any song titles? Or? Point at all, you know. I mean, so. Right. So is, is there is there? Uh, I guess you said there's kind of a, a spiritual theme, but is there a concept to it or? No. No, okay. no absolutely no concept. Um, again, it's a, a selection of songs that I wrote before we went into the studio. Um, what can I tell you about them? That it's very hard to, to describe or talk about music. Yeah. say there's a handmade feel to it oh god I don't know uh, uh, but at, at the same time it sounds like you were you were doing you were writing these more bed sit style than you have in recent years where you were kind of uh, working as you went along in the studio yeah very Is little improv in that way yeah exactly they do what they're pretty much cut and tailored before I went in um, 
but of course, as I always do, I gave the musicians quite wide berth. Uh, I gave them a, a leeway to work and interpret the stuff as they were hearing it. Mostly, obviously, with the two guys I mentioned, it was an, a sense of ambience. Right rather than anything else. I mean, they were, it's, they're pretty structured in terms of their chordal progressions and, and the shape and, and, and where, and the uh, route that they're going to take. I mean, that I had a pretty firm blueprint of exactly what all that should do, and that was um, pretty much written out in terms of, you know, what, what, what are the chords? Sure. <laughs> and, and a lot of the key riffs and things like that, but I, I kind of did all that before we went in. But um, uh, um, I gave David and Matthew kind of uh, really free reign to provide a kind of atmospheres that they felt comfortable with and they felt were appropriate for the piece we were doing. Right, right. And uh, it's just a great way to work to, um, you know, ask for that kind of, you know, the creative generosity from the musicians you're working with. And those two guys are just great and they gave back a lot. Yeah, I guess I'm curious too how, how you came about with uh, working with Tony again because he's, I mean, he's been with you since what the hype or something? Or, oh um, yeah, and the last album that we physically worked on together in a big way was uh, Scary Monsters. Sure. Um, uh, well, we've t actually talked about it for a number of years now, but um, it, the, the opportunity and also I didn't really feel the material was absolutely right for what I, I knew that I could pull out of Tony. I, I kind of work with people and I, t I kind of. I kind of know what they'd be good at doing, mm -hmm. and I, there was just this certain series of songs that I just knew Tony would really get behind, and and uh, have to have him work on these particular things I knew was the right chemistry at the right time. Um, and sometimes you have to be very patient until that particular kind of creative window comes up. Right. Yeah, I guess I was curious too because you, you're an artist that doesn't like to backtrack, and uh, what, was was that no, a exactly. Was that a tough decision to bring somebody in who's had such a an impact on, on your... your uh, Not really, because uh, in a way, nothing that Tony and I have really done together, part, possibly from the three Eno albums, but they they, they had um, a similarity only by a virtue of the, the kinds of people that were working on them more mm -hmm. than anything else. But nothing else that we ever did together ever sounded the same. I mean, the, the diversity of material from young Americans to you know, low to scary monsters, it's, it's all very, very different stuff. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I just knew that, you know, we, uh, neither of us uh, had the patience to try and recreate something we'd already done before. So I knew that whatever we do would be kind of pretty, pretty adventurous and fairly brave. And, and since he knows you so well, is he, is he more likely to argue a point he feels yeah. strongly about? Oh, absolutely. Whereas... No, the, it, it, uh, that... Actually, it hasn't occurred on this one. No, that's we've good. been in absolute uh, um, sympathy with each other's uh, views on, on exactly what it was we were doing here, um, which, is, again, has been terrific. No, that's wonderful. Um, let's see, what else could I say about this? Um, though Matthew and uh, David are, are pretty much the, uh, the guys for the album, um, I'd just like to mention that, of course, if I and when I do shows and whatever next year, I'll still be working with Gayland Dorsey and um, Sterling and, and uh, Mike Garson and Mark Platting. Oh, okay. Still keeping my original stage band. And, and anybody I've been to the show. Uh, Gail uh, was just up the other day listening to the new mixes to uh, start thinking about learning them. <laughs> oh, very cool. So you will tour this album then? Uh, it's looking good. I mean, if we can find something that doesn't fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were never a big fan of planes, right? I'm, I'm less, less of a fan now than right. I was a few weeks ago, yeah. I can imagine. Um, and I guess, are there are there any other players on the album, like from, from the younger generation well, artists? Actually, you've... no. No, no. Oh, I, okay. uh, no, and there's no guest stars and all that business. Uh, it, it's it's uh, just my work and the guys that I chose to play. Carlos Alomar works on two tracks. Oh, great. Um, and uh, Townsend has taken a track away with him. Uh, whether or not he does anything on it, uh, it's entirely up to him. Um, right. It would be lovely if he uh, wanted to do something. But I only... I really would like to emphasize on that with somebody like Pete, it's not because it's I, I wanted to have any kind of a guest artist type thing on the album, because uh, I personally am not into that at right. all. But I really do like Pete's playing a lot, and uh, it, it would just be lovely if, on this particular track that I gave him if he were to do it. I think he probably is going to do something. And he was, he was on Scary Monsters too. So he was indeed, yeah. Interesting connection.
Yeah, I, it was the first thing that Tony and I said. I said the only kind of uh, the I, only I, ironic nod to the past that we should give is try and get Pete, uh, try and find a track that Pete would work great on. Right, right. And uh, so we did. We did, <laughs> and it worked out beautifully. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, um, I, I guess I was curious too if you. Uh, yes, I tell you what else. There's another element that's very important on this album that that um, I've not had before. Um, do you know Martha Mook? Um. No, no. She's a, she's a, a violinist, uh, um, again, a downtown violinist. Um, pretty much got her own scene going where she plays uh, electric and kind of two loops and things like that. Um, but she's also part of a quartet that she's formed. Um, and that quartet, they're an electric quartet. Um, but I, when I say electric, they actually do use uh, wire pedals. and I mean, they're fully electric. You know? Right, right. Um, and they feature on a good few tracks as well. It's a, it's a very new kind of atmosphere for me. Wow. Um, and it's uh, an extraordinary sound. Um, I think that's about really... That's as much as I can really give you with, without actually, you know, naming songs or playing um, tracks to you. Yeah. But I, I suppose my overall comment is, is that I'm just I'm, I'm quietly excited about it. That's, that's fantastic. Sounds wonderful. Um, I guess one, one other question is, is have, have, you, um, have you written a, a follow-up to Kooks for, for Alexandria? And have it, uh... <laughs> um, not for public consumption. I must say, I've written a brand new tune to The Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round. <laughs> <laughs> But watch out, they'll be bootlegged. So. I know, I know. I, yeah, I kind of done, I've done goofy things at home. I've put nothing on, uh, you know. Uh, bless this child, may not, may she not have to grow up with all that. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I got songs for her, they're kind of home. They're home songs, they're not going on record. This right, time. right. Well, excellent. I um, mean, do, do you have a title that you, do, you're... Um, you can divulge uh, at this point? Or? No, I, I, I do, but I... Uh, can I think... Because I haven't actually... I don't want it carved in stone yet. Okay, gotcha. So I, I, I know that you guys do uh, to be announced. <laughs> right, right. So you're going to go so for I, the TV I'd and... like that, yeah. All right, excellent. Well, no, I can't wait to hear it, so... And I think we're going for, like, March... Uh, late March, early April next year. Maybe even a little sooner than that. No, oh, excellent. And the shows would come with the release of the album. I definitely want to do some stuff. And are, are you remaining on, on Virgin now that the, the berries are gone, or...? Nice talking with you, Rob. <laughs> 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 I don't... Uh, what, what, do you know something I don't know? Nancy's... Oh... Uh, I thought it was just Ken. Well, I guess I figured... I, I thought they were just a, a couple, so... But, um... Mm, I, I'm, I'm misinformed then. Huh. So, Okay. <laughs> no, no I, I just I just heard the Ken, but um. Um, uh, the, yes, that's what I mean. I thought it was just Ken. Okay. Um, uh, I think. Um, you, you don't need to comment. It's no. Thank you very much. No I, I, you know, I guess we should say that I am signed to Virgin. Virgin. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Rob. Well, I look forward to hearing it, and uh, best of luck with everything. Thank you very much. Take indeed. care. Bye bye.